Good morning. Good morning. Java Delight will uplift you. Stay tuned. The show is about to begin. Grab your coffee. Stay tuned. This show is about to begin. Good. Good morning, Fiat people. Hi, buddy. Hi. I got caught halfway through a yawn when you pulled me in. <laughs> That's why I was like, ah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is a great way to start our day. It is Tuesday. It is a terrific Tuesday. Do you know why it's a terrific Tuesday, Gavin? Um. I'm not, I'm not sure. Is there something going on with the Middle East? I don't know why the Middle East would make it a terrific Tuesday, but we're going to say yes. Just oh, because. oh, never mind. I, I, I misheard you. I want to know what you're thinking. Though. You're like, I'm like, it's a terrific Tuesday. And you're like, why? Is something happening in the Middle East? I'm like. I thought you so said no. terrific. Oh, no, that would be really bad. No, I'm not saying that terrific. would be. Yeah. Like that, that's totally different. That's why I was so confused. <laughs> let's, let's restart this. Ready? Hold on. It's Taco Tuesday. There's no confusion with tacos. Hold on. I can do this. Where did I put it? Ready? Um... <laughs> Good morning, Gavin Kerr. How are you? Wonderful to have everybody joining us today. It is a uh, Tuesday in May. And I don't... It's Cinco de Mayo! No, it isn't. No, no it's, it's May tomorrow. the 4th be with you. Yeah. It's May the 4th be with you. That's right. Tomorrow... Maybe we Yoda, talk. y'all, because that's Star Wars now. <laughs> yeah. May the 4th be with you. Uh, are you a Star Wars fan at all or no? Not really. No, I, I've seen some of the new ones. Um, I, I've watched, I think like episodes one and two, cause a buddy and I were trying to watch them all in chronological order since I had never seen them. So I've seen like episode one and two, I've seen, um, a couple, I've seen like the last two or three that came out in theaters. I went and saw with people, but I've never been like, I've seen all the family guys Star Wars. So like, I understand all of the references, I understand all the arguments, all the plots, and everything like that. I've just never actually sat down and watched them. Me either. Just yeah. being honest. Um, it's not that I don't want to. It's I'm ADD. And it doesn't keep my attention long enough. And that's because by the time the little like furry guys come running out, the Jabawakis, nope, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right at all. Jabawakis. The um, Jabawakis. Oh, what are they called? Oh, I, I, uh, Baby Yoda is my new favorite. That's not what they're called. But good morning, Tokyo Bento. Yep. Good morning, Brian Tracy. Good morning, Tokyo Bento. Ewoks. Ah, uh, oh, yes, they are Ewoks. I would love to yeah. be, like, All right, I'm going to have some fun with you for a second. Any pet in the world, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We do have Jessica Dugas with us in 30 minutes. Today is the day that we get... To meet the big D. I'm excited for it. Nice. Hola, hola. I Buenos clicked on dias. it. Buenos dias slash good morning. Buenos dias, Jake. So, all right, you ready? Random yeah. question. Any pet in the world, any, you could have a pet lion, a pet whale, a pet penguin. What is the pet you would want? Write it in the comments. Everybody else can answer. You and I can answer is this, like this. Is this a real like creature? Like, or you become a, a you become a billionaire, Gavin. Okay. Yeah. First off, your initials are going to change to BG. 
billionaire Gavin, and wow. then you can ad- <laughs> you can adopt any pet. You can have any pet you want. Sharks. Yeah. What would you want? That's a tough one. Do you want me to answer? Yeah, tell me about yours as well. I think penguin. Hands down, I'd want a penguin. Why? I'd want to dress up in a because I want to dress up in a tux, drive an Uber around, and pick people up. Be like, sorry, he gets priority seating. We got. I just up know a bunch of really like bad facts about animals. So I, when you say penguin, I just thought about all the horrible things about penguins. <laughs> penguins are amazing. I'm taking you to Detroit and making you go into the penguin exhibit with me. Yeah, penguins <laughs> works. Penguins are not. Uh, Brian Tracy yeah. says he wanted a grizzly bear. Of course. Well, duh. Didn't you wrestle one once, buddy? I thought I heard that. I'd probably... Chinchilla. I used to have Man. a chinchilla, and all that thing did was fling its poop and masturbate. All right. That's all it did. It was not so as like fun me. of a pet as we thought. Yeah. So it's like me as a roommate. Yeah. It, it was not as fun of a pet as we thought. Jacqueline Rodriguez, what is your pet that you'd want? Jessica Dugas, what is your pet other than your kids? She didn't even laugh at that. And all I guess I'd probably I'd probably just get a bigger uh, I'd probably just get some different kind of snake. Either, really? Uh, yeah, I'd probably get like um like like a king cobra or something. I get that. Brian Tracy yeah. says he may have wrestled a bear. Uh, while Tokyo Bento says back to strokes. Yep. Back to strokes. Stroke. <laughs> Stroke. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, King Cobra, you, you, you can train them um, to do like different like tricks and stuff like that with you. Like you can like build, they're smart, they're intelligent animals for the most part. And so you can build like a different kind of trust with them. And then on top of that, I just like that they get to be like 14 feet long. Oh, I have to be honest, buddy. Yeah, the biggest enormous. thing that scares me about your place is your snakes. Yeah. I just, I've never been a snake guy. When I was a kid, uh, my dad's friend had a boa constrictor and they thought it was absolutely hysterical to keep scaring me with it. And I'm like three. Yeah. And since that day, I've never been a fan of snakes. Well, if you are not if you ever come over, we can do some snake therapy. Um, I'll, I'd co- I'm coming over today. I see you today for a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah we, I, I can bring out um, Calypso if you want. She's, so Calypso is my smaller boa. She's a little tank territorial. So if she's hungry, she'll strike, which I, I believe I do need to feed her. Now I got to check my calendar. Um, so we probably won't mess with her. But uh, Azazel, which happens to be the big one. Uh, he's very, very sweet. I actually took him out the other day to the neighbors. Um, he shed for me. I have a perfect shed that is now as tall as me. No. Oh, yes, it is perfect. There isn't one break in it. It goes all the way from head to tail. I'm so happy about it. Honestly, and, that's cool. That's cool yeah, to me. I, I agree with you. Yeah, oh, it's so cool. And I took it out to show the kids next door because they were all playing outside. They were, they were doing like a cookout or something. And I was doing yard work, so I, I went over and I showed it to him. Like, oh, can we see the snake? And I was like, yeah, I'll see why not. He's friendly. So I took him out there, and I got pictures of me, like, putting it around, like, on their shoulders and stuff like that, all these kids holding him and stuff. But he, he, he did great, you know. He didn't hiss or anything. He wasn't trying to get away. He was very calm the whole time and relaxed, and so were they. So he's definitely a people person snake. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um. I have a salamander tattooed on my leg. I do. Oh, I like this comment, Dinosaur Jr. I love it. All oh right, God. ready? I want to know what you got into last night while I pull up my article in the background. What did I do last night? Um, oh, it's Donut Tuesday. What? I can have a donut oh today? A nice. taco, taco Tuesday, donut every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes yeah I have one if, you wear, if you wear a tux you wear a bow tie can you wear another tie with a tux i feel like that is a crime against humanity no 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 it is a black tie you can wear the black tie there is a significant difference on when you wear each gotcha gotcha 
and the black tie is meant to be like fancier for real the the bow tie is meant to be stylish hmm. Ooh, Interesting. good morning you beautiful souls brian I'm Tokyo, still waking Jack, up, so. yes. um i'm, I'm very curious up, so about I, I feel like um i feel like i'm sounding almost for like a batman audition right now the way that my voice like keeps crackling <laughs> I picture you as Batman. I, I am Batman. <laughs> I can play Batman. Actually, yeah, sure. really give me a Batman impression. I don't think it's so much of an impression; it's more of like an interpretation. If I want to be the Batman, I'll be the Batman. Where is he? <laughs> I'm just gonna stay quiet and let you keep going. Tokyo I'm Bento. The whole damn show like this. If I have to. Deal. I'm not the host this show need. I'm not the host this show wants, but the host this show needs. <laughs> Where's the guest? Where is he? She, she. <laughs> we have we have Jessica Dugas on today, Batman. And um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm curious about this. Tokyo Beno, what is Children's Day in Japan? Is it a day where we honor kids? Is it a day where you uh, like you get rid of your kids? Is it a day where we celebrate not having kids? I'm just curious. Maybe it's Morning. maybe it's a day of both uh, celebrating having and not having kids. I, I guess it all it. depends on how you look at it. True, true, yeah. true. All right, you ready for my article? Yeah, what do you got? It's going to be a big one. I hope you're ready. So an elderly man gets a lessons on hair and makeup to help his struggling wife. So, a, a devoted 79-year-old husband visited a beauty school to get lessons in hair and makeup to his to help his beautiful wife, who can no longer ready herself. The gentleman walked into the Alberta Del Mar College of Hair and Aesthetics and told the director, Carrie, that he wanted to learn how to use a curling wand. <clears throat> His wife's vision, uh, his wife's vision was falling and she keeps burning herself as a result. So he was looking for a few tips. The man paired with a student and mannequin and was taught how to operate the curling wand and protect his wife's skin. He also asked for tips on applying her mascara. The adorable OAP asked, uh, asked for tips on applying her mascara. Carrie said, my staff and students were so touched by his sincere wish to help his wife of 50 plus years. He lovingly pulled pictures from his wallet, showing everyone his wife and boasted about how beautiful and talented she's always been. Her appearance has always, has always been something she's taken pride in and it's important to her. Therefore, it's important to me. He is turning 80 this May, and I think he is also a very brave man for stepping into a hair college and asking for lessons on styling hair. I don't think too much, too, I don't think too many men would do that. In an age staged of social media photos, it was really great to see an authentic, real human gesture of love. Since his, his, his initial visit, both the man and his wife have visited the college to express their gratitude to everyone there. Carrie said, they're both impressed with his professional skills and her hair is looking on fleek. <laughs> That's amazing. Have you ever tried to actually uh, like do someone else's makeup before? Yeah, it's I've done hair. I, I, I can dye hair. I can't curl hair. Um, yeah. I, I don't have hair, so it's not like I understand it that much. And I mean, honestly, I haven't had hair in so long that I don't know how to like do much with it. This is a totally different hair that you have to use different oils. You have to use yeah. different shampoos. So it's not a fair assessment. But I did have a sister who 100% could not do anything with her hair. He, she can't brush it. She couldn't anything. It always hurt her and she'd cry. So my mom would like take time and, and do her thing. And when my mom got really mad at her, I was the one that would, would help every now and then. It's nothing crazy, but like I learned how to do some things, but I'm yeah. not exact. I wouldn't call myself a beautician. I would just call myself beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Um, the Jessica yeah, Dugan. Love... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Her face in the background was so worth that joke. Oh, go ahead, Gavin. I'm sorry. You're good. 
Uh, yeah, no, it's it's difficult though. It's difficult to do like somebody else's makeup. Um, so I've I've had to do my makeup a couple times for um, like uh, like musicals and plays, or like just for fun sometimes. In all honesty, but then also I remember in high school, I don't know why I was doing it, but um, I, I was doing one of my friends' makeup. She was having me do her makeup for a little bit. And it's difficult, you know. That's definitely. It's, it's tricky on somebody else. You think it'd be easier. You think it'd be like drawing a like, piece of paper, but no, because I'm like worried I'm going to poke them in the eye and stuff like that with mascara or eyeliner and things. So, And then also, he's well, how old is that guy, 80? He just turned 80 in May. And as Brett Gordon said from Businesses Are People, Lo- People Too, uh, at 80 years old, he joined and said, hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, that's funny. But yeah, so 80 years old, trying to learn that new trick. That, that's awesome. That I think just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how old you are. You can always pick something up. You can always learn something new. I think that's part of what keeps people young and alive is, uh, is learning new things and is like trying to pick up new skills. That's I agree. Interesting. I think that so many people think that it's more accustomed to you being – just yourself like oh i'm too old for that it's it's a cop-out it's like busy you know that you know when people say busy they're always like the person that's watching the most tv you know what i mean like i i i'm not saying that's everybody but at the same point like being able to learn a new trait is always up to us uh my parents uh, my parents have two dogs. We have a uh, puppy, and you know, I wouldn't call her a puppy. She's like a year old now, but uh, she's a she's a rescue. And then you have my mom and dad's old dog, which is a like pit slash lab mix, and he's like fourteen years old. And that dog still has like he loves to learn new things. I I've, I'm teaching him how to roll over because he's never wanted to learn that. Now he's in the mood to learn that. Uh, <laughs> I'm teaching him. My mom is teaching him, believe it or not, right and left. Like she's teaching him sh- shake right hand shake, and she sticks her hand out and she sticks her right hand out and he puts the right right paw in there. It's pretty cool because he's 14, and it's like he there's no yeah. age. I've never thought about it, but that'd probably be something that's going to be, like, really useful to teach a dog their right and their left. I've never thought about teaching a dog that, like, even for, like, a split second remotely. Never thought of that. I agree. Uh, do the dogs wear clothes uh, only if they match my outfit? Fair enough. <laughs> Gavin Kerr, what is yeah. your article today, <laughs> So I actually thought that you were going to pick this article. So I picked the article that you just did. So (laughs) new smart farming robot unveiled that quote unquote smokes weeds with high powered laser for healthy weeding. (laughs) That you would appreciate it. I saw it. I was that close. (laughs) So weeds compete for soil nutrients, water, space, and sunlight with the crops farmers grow to help people to help feed people. Now a third generation weeding robot armed with lasers and powered by AI offers an ultimate labor saving device while also eliminating the need for chemical herbicides. The autonomous weeder by Carbon Robotics can eliminate 100,000 weeds per hour and clear about 15 to 20 acres in a single day. Pardon me, I have the hiccups. (laughs) Numbers that require a person's working for an entire season to match. er, Troubling down the rows of crops, a battery of 12 cameras scan the ground, identifying weeds through machine learning and killing them with CO2 laser. CO2 lasers use reactions between nitrogen, helium, carbon, and oxygen to generate powerful beams of light that are concentrated throughout mirrors inside the lasers. Uh, the robot's onboard supercomputer ensures millimeter precision that with its lasers so as to avoid accidentally clipping crops. This is one of the most innovative and valuable technologies that I've seen as a farmer, said James Johnson of Carzalian Farm in a statement who 
has utilized carbon robotic technology on his farm. Uh, this two acre vertical farm produces more. Oh, that's another article. Never mind. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think that's another article, but I'm gonna like it. Was also going. about farming. They bamboozled me, the bastards. <laughs> they tricked you into keep reading. Yeah, I, I expect the robots to, or I expect the robots to go mainstream because of how efficient they address some of uh, farming's most critical issues, including overuse of chemicals, uh, of, pro process efficiency, and labor. The sky is the limit. If a farmer who wants to avoid using chemical herbicides, which has been flooded nearly every corner of our food and water supply chains, a proper cardigan, cardinogen? Hide, highlighted. I'm trying to find where you're at. I was opening up things in the background for our guest. Uh, where? With a probable cardinogen. Carc there we Carc go. Carcinogen. Oh, uh, I thought I had it. Oh, you were you were really close. I was giving you points for it. All right, I gave you I, like I appreciate, life I appreciate the life points. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, with a probable carcinogen in the form of glyphosate, Good that enough. they must find enough unskilled workers to pull weeds manually. A difficult task in an already shortened market of ab ab agricultural labor. Solving both problems, it's no surprise that the 2021 model of autonomous uh, weeder has already sold out, even considering the price tag, which was, quote, at the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Attempting to make a device more accessible, less options are available from the company, as they have already made a 2022 model available for pre-order. And then we do got a quick little video here. Get it. Get it. Can you hear it? I can, yeah. Cool. See, this is like so exciting to me. Just because this is all going back to that thing I'm always talking about, grain. G-R-A-I-N, this is the robotics. These are fully automatic, with powerful laser destroying weeds. You know, they're quick, they're easy. I, I think the only way to really improve them, if they, I didn't say that they are, but if you can make them solar panel. I like, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they run. I'm not sure if they run on gasoline or electricity or what, but if we were to make them uh, solar panel and electric, then that would, that would be pretty awesome. Look at the difference it's making on the side. Yeah. And you know what's really exciting about this is that this is the beginning of it. You know what that means? Oh, it's One just gonna day, get better. Yeah, well, in my mind, I'm seeing like people with riding mowers that have weed killing lasers on them. You're cutting and de-weeding. Yeah, or I'm, I'm seeing like um, like a, uh, a, what are they called? A metal detector that has that has lasers on the end of it that you use to cut weeds and kill them. I think wow. that'd be pretty awesome. Wow. That's pretty stinking cool. Good yeah. article, buddy. It wasn't yeah. the weed I was thinking you were going with, but it was still good. I know. That's, what, that's why I put it on there. It's, it smokes the weeds. It takes them out real quick. Question. Answer. Uh, do you ever dress, would you dress a dog up? No, probably not. Oh, man. It's rare to see the, see naked dogs in Tokyo. He's, uh, Tokyo Vento says. Uh, dogs are people here, too. And he literally uh, was saying how they dress up their dogs and all that. Now, me, I would not mind. My mom puts my mom, her dogs in sweaters every now and then. Uh, I am more of... Um, your dog is your dog, and I'm not gonna put it in a, in anything. But I have seen things that I want to put my dogs in, so it's not fair to say I wouldn't dress them up. Unless it's like a specific situation, like I have a dog that does not do very well in um in the cold, 
and I yeah. need to take it outside for some reason, then maybe I'd like put like a dog jacket on it, or like if um, like I know I know uh, in Arizona a lot of people get like little boots for their dogs when they go on walks because the pavement is extremely hot and harmful to their paws. Mm-hmm. You know that, that's something I understand, but if it, if it's not necessary, then no, I'm not doing that. I don't even like putting clothes on myself. <clears throat> I barely do. Yeah. You know, uh, so guys, we have a special guest today. Our guest is going to be Mr. Jay Badar. Badar, if I'm saying that wrong, he'll correct me, I hope. Uh, he founded the Excavate the Office to help people who are nagged by thoughts like, have you guys ever felt like I'm wasting the best years of my life? Do I yeah. really have to wait until I retire to do things I want to do? Is life really this boring? Life is too short to live for retirement and just tolerate 40 plus of our precision, oh my gosh, precise years. That's why I walked away from my lucrative job, but unfulfilling career as a pharmacist. He had access to free drugs and he walked away. (laughs) I (laughs) joke was right there. I'm so sorry. I had to make a joke. It was all a joke. Uh, I didn't think I had the skills to do anything else. I didn't even know what I wanted to do, but this wasn't it. Uh, I was sick of waiting around for some ha ha moment. Aha moment. Uh, or for some inspiration to strike me like a miraculous lightning bolt. <laughs> so I developed a system to figure out what I really wanted to do and validate my idea. The system to, that took into account my values, my lifestyle I wanted to live, the results. I'm now an in-demand growth expert and healthcare distributor. I, do, I don't have a business degree. I didn't have any prior experience. But I do have a career that lets me make an impact, pays what pays me what I'm worth, and gives me the flexibility to live my life. Hashtag end of story. Just kidding. You see, the work is a, is a major source of unhappiness for 50 to 80 percent of Americans. That is why I started sharing my systems with my system with friends and eventually coaching clients. With with the right tactics and some persistence, I hope to help a lot of people make that impact, make the impact they want to make. I think this is going to be a phenomenal interview. Uh, If you know somebody who you know they're saying things like, I'm wasting the best years of my life, life is too short, Uh, my life is really boring, Uh, do yourself a favor, share this with friends, share this with people that are there, let them know that we're going to be having a conversation about that today. And we love, I, I love how Tokyo Beno is actually correcting my words with the right spelling of them. Like I could read it here different than I could there. Thank you, Tokyo. I love you, bro. Uh, but like for real, like think of, uh, of people you might know that would be great that we might benefit from this today because this is a good conversation. It's going to be a good interview. But before we get into any of that, I have to be honest, guys, we have the big D with us. Let's have some fun and bring on the one, the only, the precious, my precious Jessica Dukas. Oh, my, don't do that. It's my precious. Hey, that was me. <laughs> Hi. You know, I, I've never liked when anybody has ever done a um, a Gollum impression. It's just never been my cup of tea. What did you mean? brought the Care Bear. What did you mean, Gavin? <laughs> Gavin, it's okay. You're going to be Batman. I'm going to be Smeagol. Oh, die, my precious. I want to take the entity of that voice and put it in a blender. It would sound like a... Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it just makes me think of like... Um, like that voice makes me think of like gremlins. And I, and I just... I don't know. Every time that I saw saw the gremlins, you know, the little um, the little movie and whatnot with the... Uh, yeah, the, the horror movie, the classic. Every time right. I saw them, I always thought Gizmo was the cutest. But then once they turned to those green monsters, I'm like, wow, these are the most obnoxious things in the world. These are terrible. Uh, so, all right, hold on. 
if I was to make a commercial, I need Disney on this one, and I'm not going to get this approval. I would want to have the gremlin be all mean and then take a pack of delight, put it in their drink, and then their baby Yoda. What do you guys think? That'd be that's, fantastic. I, I think that's a great commercial idea, but that's not at all how the anatomy works, which is why I think it'd be <laughs> successful because people, the internet would be pissed about it. It get people to talk. It shows what I'm trying to do. I need another light over here because it, apparently I have shadows here now. Jessica, do you like my new background? I worked on it. I do. I actually love it because you've got the you got the plain color, but also the hats are really you. Like many times when we see you, you've got a hat on if you don't have the headphones on, and so I think I think it's you, one hundred percent. I thank you. You are my inspiration. Now, you guys ready for some really fun news? The hoarder that I call mom has literally been in here with me cleaning this room, and we have been taking it. I can see a floor. She is loving what we're doing in here. I've started hanging things for her, and we're making this my mom's like craft room, mm -hmm. and yes. it is literally turning into something so cute. I think I'm going to have to take pictures for where everything is now. And then take pictures again when I'm done, because truthfully, I'm so proud of her and the work she's putting in on this. She even said yesterday, she's feeling proud of the work she did. And we didn't do a ton. We got a good amount of like two hours of work in here together. And it looks, I got my own little section now. I have four feet that I get to work with in this house. <laughs> and I curl up really tight at night. Luckily, both the dogs sleep on me as my weighted blanket. Uh, but yeah. So I'm loving this. And you were my inspiration just behind this. So please know. <laughs> well, it's not fairy lights, but it's very Brandon. My fairy lights, my friend lost. I let him borrow them. <laughs> They wouldn't have been you though. Like, that's the thing. Like so many people that are, you know, doing shows or trying to do lives or anything like that, they're trying to emulate what other people are doing. And yeah. that's great to a point, but it's the, it's the, there's my heavy down there uh, <laughs> from the other room. Uh, I love him. You got to be you though. Like you have to do something that is you at the end of the day. And so it's nice to look, you know, streamlined to a point you know, if you're working with a team or whatever, but you've got to, you got, I just think you've got to be you. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I will have some new things in here tomorrow and it is part of me as well. And I, if you guys can find all of it because there's so many things behind me, you may win a prize tomorrow and That's don't fine. act, don't act surprised, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dugas. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fantastic this morning. Um, it has been storming all morning. I made a TikTok this morning of a, another video from my doorbell camera that hopefully won't be like drama this time. But the no, the, you want it to be drama. <laughs> yeah, right. The storm no came through. Backwards. Their storm came through so fast this morning, and you can watch my little tree on the porch just fall over and start to roll. Like, thank God we have a railing there. I was like, don't go off the porch. Oh. My poor, my poor tree. It literally says that. Oh, my poor tree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> turtle, tur turtle. I like how Phil Philip's getting like good mornings all over yes. the place. Like he shows. Uh, Philip is everybody's favorite. He really is the big D in the D family. And he is. like uh, Jessica has had three more kids since coming on the air. I have. It has been, what are we at? Seventy-eight now. I, at least, at least, at least. yes. Yeah. <laughs> like her goal is to repopulate the earth with Dugas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty. Yeah, no, the repopulating is done. It's it's finished. <laughs> you, you have all right. You have six kids. Yes, or, I have six no, children. Mm -hmm. Got it. And Phil counts as number seven, or is Phil really not count as a kid? Most it's, wife counts their husband as kids. It depends on the moment. I try. I think that's funny to a point. Like to be serious for a minute, though. Like I, he, he really is like the rock that holds us all together because yeah. we're all. Me and all six of my children are creatives. We're very um, airy, lots of ideas, conversationalists. And he's just like, can you take a breath? Can you find a yeah. pause? Find a pause between your words. And we also encourage him to have a little more fun, be more spontaneous and stuff like that. So it's a nice, a nice play. But he really does have to hold it down for seven people. So I have to give him credit for that. <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's good to have some balance in the household. Yeah. 
Yeah, you benefit from both. Yeah, for so sure. We are actually having you on today. In general, we have you on every Tuesday. Yeah. Um, but we're having a little bit more serious of a conversation this week. Uh, we're going to switch it into a serious one. Uh, Miss Jessica Dugas, uh, tell us what's going on this week for you and what you're up to. Sure. So um, this coming Thursday on May the 6th, it would have been my brother's 36th birthday. And um, I celebrate his birthday every year since he died in 2010. He was 24 years old and um, he had metastatic, metastatic melanoma. So that's basically for anybody that is not aware, it is skin cancer that has spread throughout your body. Um, by the time he was re-diagnosed um, in April, uh, he loves some golf, let me tell you. Um, by the time he was re-diagnosed um, in early 2009 um, to the time he died um, in January of 2010, it had it was in his brain, his lungs, his lymph nodes, his bloodstream, everywhere. It was very, very fast how it happened. And um, he was larger than life. I remember so many times growing up being so incredibly jealous of him because he never cared what other people th thought. He was always just a hundred percent him and big and, and F it all. And, and I was very growing up just so worried about what everybody else thought and trying to be the people pleaser and do what other people. And so I remember many times feeling like I wish I could just have a a little bit of that. And I feel like since he died, I really started to come into myself, which is a whole other story and brings up lots of other emotions. But um, the the whole story behind the whole thing. So my grandfather, actually, I got a phone call in um, the last week of um, January. And, uh, my mom said, um, you know, Grampy's not doing good. My grandparents helped to raise me. And so I was very, very, very close with them. Um, my grandfather was not doing well. They didn't expect him to last much longer. And so we made the decision to start driving up to Connecticut and we barely got through from it, from Alabama to Atlanta when they called and said that he was gone. And so we had gone up to Connecticut. Now that same week, my brother was admitted to ICU. So it, it was, we had gone up for my, and by the way, that was my mother's birthday as well, the day that my grandfather died. So th this was like, the perfect storm of yeah. emotions and stuff. And, and so we, we were up there for my grandpa's um, funeral and every day. So from the time we went up there, we had gone um, to Yale New Haven hospital, which where my brother was in Connecticut. We had gone to see him um, every day to see how he was. I'm so grateful, so grateful yeah. that we were there. Um, for my grandfather's funeral, because otherwise I wouldn't have been there for Adam. Um, the morning of my grandpa's funeral, we got the call from Yale New Haven that Adam had taken a turn overnight. Uh, my mother had to made, make the very difficult decision to not go to her dad's funeral and instead go to the hospital to my brother. And two hours after my grandpa's funeral, my brother passed away. So it was just this week of what, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, just completely overwhelmed with everything. Um, I remember a lot of it became really blurry. Um, I walked in right at, I, we, we rushed up to, um, Yale New Haven to see my brother. And I had walked in right after his literal last breath. I walked into the room, um, and I remember I wrote about this in a book called shine where I sat down and I, I experienced like you ever see like um, on a movie where somebody has this reel of their life going through their head, like, and they go through all these moments and all these memories. That's exactly what I was going through in that moment of, it was all of these memories of him, but also um, I had so much guilt afterwards because I had thought so much about myself in that moment of going, 
who the hell are you? What are you doing with your life? What is like, because up until that point, like I really felt like I was living a lie. I was, I was tr pretending to be someone I wasn't. I was really not happy with myself and decisions I had made. Um, and when, and I explain this a lot where, um, you know, grief is hard, no matter who, the person is that passes away on anyone, but yeah. sibling loss is something that is a completely different animal because of the fact that typically you are so close in age um, that it, it really does shove you in to this place of, holy shit, I'm a mortal being, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, you may know that like subconsciously going through your life, but it doesn't hit you until that holy cow, like this is someone that's close to me, like close to my age. And so I had a, I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of grief. I had a lot of grief. I had a lot of guilt about the feelings that I was feeling. And, but going through that experience and sharing about it, um, is something that, uh, I is really important to me because I feel like grief in itself is such a multidimensional, multifaceted set of emotions and experience that I yeah. think it can be so difficult for people to feel like they are um, not alone in what they're going through and that what they're experiencing is in fact valid. Absolutely. And not only um, <clears throat> what you said too, with being so close in age, but also losing a sibling, that's somebody that you grow up with. Mm -hmm. So somebody that that you just kind of, sub and even consciously think to yourself, they're going to be around forever. Right. That right. That is extremely, extremely difficult to, to yeah. choke down and deal with. And uh, how the, were the, the uh, stages of grief for you when you were going through them? Did you um, kind of skip around a bit? Did you go through yeah. all of them or... Yeah, I think so. I, I'm not really sure that I've identified even looking back, like, this was the time that I went through this. This was the time that yeah. I went through this. I think it was very much all over the place where sometimes e even now, sometimes I go through this. I remember with my grandmother, when she passed away a couple years later, um, she, I, I like years, five years later, I would pick up the phone and call her and being complete. Like I just was in denial in that moment that she was not here. And so I had already felt like I grieved, I cried, I processed, I did anger for all of these different things. And five years later, I'm picking up the phone to call her yeah. because I'm just in denial in that moment. So I feel like all of these stages are not necess necessarily stages, but it's something that you just deal with and they come up over time. Um, to give you guys a little bit of a timeline here. So my grandfather died uh, January, 2010, um, Adam, January, 2010, my grandmother passed away the next year in December, 2011, my brother's fiance, who was 33 years old, passed away in 2018 and her mother passed away, um, this past February. So it, it's been this whole, and every time like someone's connected to that person and they pass yeah. away, it brings up all of that stuff again, you know? And so I feel like you're continually, um, for me, it's been about making the conscious choice of acknowledging what I'm experiencing and what's coming up and then saying, I'm still alive though. And I'm going to go ahead yeah. and honor them and honor myself by living. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, because it's something we don't think about typically because it's extremely depressing but people a hundred millions of people die every single day mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people constantly die but once they're in your circle once they're like like death is like right right in your little uh your group however big or small that may be then we become really aware to it and we think oh shit that could mm -hmm. be me in any moments now Right. That could be me. That, that could be the people that I love. That could be people I care about. It was people I love, people I care about. Who is it going to get next? That, that's that got to be extremely uh, both like revolutionary, but then also terrifying for you and your family as well, since you have mm -hmm. had so many very close um, uh, people die to you in, in right. this past, like, what, two, three years? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I had been no stranger to grief before that sort of yeah. 
you know, tumbleweed of, of grief that happened after that. But um, I was very close with my great grandparents who both had passed away prior. And um, I had a, two really, really close friends of mine die when we were in school, um, both in horrific accidents. And um, I've had a couple friends that I went to school with actually commit suicide from my class that I was close yeah. with. Um, and so I've been no stranger to grief over time. I've just found that that experience with my brother was the catalyst that began to change my own life. Um, and yeah. and it, it's like I talk about on the Breakthrough Show all the time. It's not the actual moment that matters. It's what you do with it afterwards. So yeah. any of these grief experiences could have been a breakthrough moment for me. And I think in a way they all were in some kind of some kind of way. Um, but that one in particular was the moment that I started to really change my life and change everything about my life that my life looks nothing like it used to in 2010. So Absolutely. I want to, uh, <clears throat> yesterday when we talked about this, it, mm -hmm. you talked about this on your show, we were talking about it and you, you flipped it on everybody. It was really awesome because you didn't want to stay in the emotions that can become like quicksand they become heavy and you don't even realize you're in it you guys you took it and you're like we always say oh i wish i would have said this i wish i would have done right. that like gavin even said he did he, like just said it without realizing it i wish i wish i wish uh, I love what you're doing because you're actually trying to do something a little different for your brother this year. Um, at least I, I, for me, it's new and all that. Um, you're doing the random acts of kindness in memory of your brother. And am I wrong? Am I sharing yeah. the wrong thing? No, that's right. <laughs> We've been doing it actually every single year since he died. So this is um, 2010, what are we at? So uh, the 11th year that we're doing this. And, and there's a lot of people that have said to me, like, Jessica, that was a long time ago. Like, you know, do you still want to do this kind of thing? And it's like, no, every year I want to do it. We wear black and yellow on the day that he died, which is the, the January 28th. And then on his birthday, I, I just wanted to, his, for his birthday, I just wanted to do something that he would have had fun with it. Yeah. He wouldn't have been like, you know, feel, feel sad that I'm not here. Um, he just wouldn't have been like that. And so when I was trying to think of something to do in the beginning, um, I said, we just need to like do nice things for people because as much as he was really out there and that big personality, he was very kind hearted and, um, he would have given you hit the shirt off his back if you needed it. And um, so I really thought that we should do something instead of, you know, being in that space of being sad, because I feel like he wouldn't have wanted that. I 100% I agree. I think that I, I shared the link here for everybody. Do yourself a favor, click that. Uh, random acts of kindness is a phenomenal thing to do, especially in honoring somebody. Uh, it, it, a gives a positive representation B there is no time limit. My grandfather passed away 22 years ago, almost 23 now. And I still go visit him and cry when I see him. Yeah. Uh, my best friend in high school committed suicide and I still go cry when I see him. And that was 18 years ago. Right. So for me, doing something like this, giving back, opening your heart, being vulnerable is a very good, healthy way of dealing with these things. And honestly, I think that it's one of those things where I love what you're doing. So what is your random act of kindness that you guys are going to be doing this day? Like, can you explain how people can get involved, how they can do this, how we can, you know? Um, so we, we've, I've always just said, do what feels good to you. Last year was interesting because, you know, we were only a couple months into COVID and everything had started shutting down. And so I had encouraged everyone last year to do something online, whether that's to donate to a charity or even just, it doesn't even have to be anything that feels like it's grandiose message someone you haven't talked to in a year. How often do we let people go go aside and, you know, message them and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. That's a random act of kindness there, you know, paying for somebody in the in the Starbucks line or, um, you know, donating to something that you might not always do giving to someone on the street. I know a lot of people don't like to do that, but do it. Maybe have faith that they're going to they're going to do something amazing with it and do that like 
you know, anything. Yes, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Miss D- Miss Duke. Um, so I think that the thing is so many people have created this negative mindset. Oh, if I give this homeless person a dollar, they're mm-hmm. going to go buy drugs and alcohol. That's Here's not your thing. business. And thank you. Give freely. Give openly. If you give a dollar because you have a dollar, do me a favor and understand you're giving that dollar because you want to help. Their choice after that is not yours. Right. It, you have no decision of what they're going to do with that money. That dollar you may give them might be what gets them on the bus that gets them to the rehab facility. Right. That dollar you get them might be the thing that costs them enough to be able to go get into a rehab center because the truth is they charge homeless people for a place to sleep at times. When right. you give freely, it's giving your heart opening to somebody. When you don't want anything back in return, that's genuineness that people can tell. Right. And for, like, I did an event this weekend with Gavin and them, and then I had to run to a second one. And at this event, some people didn't have cash. They didn't realize it was a cash event. And they, I, I made this person a drink, and they kept following me around and saying, "Let me get, let me pay you Venmo. Let me give you cash. Out. Let, I'll download PayPal. Let, let me pay for this." And I'm like, "Do me a favor. Next time you drive through a line, like a fast food line." Buy the person behind you a drink. Mm. Buy the person behind you's meal and don't want anything in drink. You have no idea who they are. You have no idea what their day is. You have no idea what's going through their mind. Set yourself apart by being that person you want to be. Mm. And I say that because if more people just did that without wanting something back, your anger is going to go away. Your anxiety is going to be taken place by doing something freely like Jessica is having with this party, with this, this gathering. It's spreading the message her brother was about. It's giving life to all of that around them and showing that positivity. So right. don't wait to give because the truth is, if you wait, the only person you're really hurting is yourself because you become calloused. And I say that from a very like open heart, guys. I mean that with all love because there's a lot of judgment out there. Uh, my you can absolutely find. Sorry, you can absolutely find too um, charities and things like that that align with who you are. Don't, he Adam Adam would have if there was something he didn't believe in, you knew about it. So I'm yeah. just like in the spirit of him, he would have absolutely done something that made him feel good. Um, that you know. So if you if you don't want to do something or give because you're afraid of anything. Give to someone you're not afraid of. Give to, you know, yeah. a, a charity that you really believe in, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be money. Give your time, yeah. give your energy, give your, you can give your money if you have it. Um, give, you're giving of yourself no matter what yeah. you're trying to do. Um, and that's what that's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh-huh. One thing that I think is, um, so if you another thing as well playing on off this if you give and expect something in return then you really aren't giving you're actually in my mind you're taking twice mm-hmm. because if you give and you expect something in return then you're taking the good feeling that you get from genuinely giving and then you're kind of squandering the authenticity of that and right. then you're also expecting something in return so if you get something in return then you are taking that as well. So you're not really giving much of anything at all. You're benefiting yeah. twice from this. You're taking right. twice. Yeah. I agree. Right. I agree. Yeah. If you receive anything back from giving, that's just a bonus. That's a, yeah. you know, an extra. Um, I would love to um, share really quickly about, um, because I've had a lot of questions over the last several years about how do we handle when someone that we know is going through a grief experience. Um, Because a lot of times what happens is people don't know what to say. And so they don't. And having been on the other side of that, it becomes very, very lonely. It feels like, and and that's not the, and I understand that that's not their intention to make you feel like you're alone, but that's what ends up happening because it's almost better to say something that, you know, than to say nothing at all and have people feel like they're alone. Um, My number one thing, my number one tip, something that I share with everybody is simply to ask questions. I would have, I love every single year when people ask me this during this week, what did you love about Adam? 
Mm-hmm. What's your favorite memory of him? What's the story that, you know, I love that. That's my favorite thing. Cause I feel like I get, I am such a feeling person. I feel like I'm sitting there with him all over again and, and getting to describe that and share that. Um, also asking questions about what would, is there anything you would like me to do? Um, are you, instead of saying, don't forget to take care of yourself, say, are you taking care of yourself? Is there anything that I can do to help you? Um, mm-hmm. It's the, d- during a season of grief, it's the last space that you want to impose on someone because every single person handles the experience differently. Every single person processes their, their grief differently. The other night, uh, Sunday evening, before I had my, um, my live that I did that evening, um, my mom messaged me and my uncle passed away on Sunday. And, um, I remember, so a friend of mine said, um, I can't believe you did a live. I hope you're taking care of yourself. And for me, that going live, that being with my people, that surrounding myself with positivity, that was absolutely taking care of myself. It just didn't look like that to them. So instead of saying, Hey, are you taking care of yourself or, or I, you, I, you know, you should be doing something else. You should be taking yeah. time off. Don't, that's not the time say, I hope you are. Is there anything I can do to, to help you, you know, yes. kind of thing. Um, so asking questions like that is number one, ask about the person, ask what you can do to help ask if there's anything that any way that you, you that they can help you remember them. Maybe they need a ride to the cemetery. Maybe they want to do something. You just gave me a brilliant question to ask. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's, it's, yes. it's a heavy topic, but it's something that I think that should be said. Yeah. If I was to die today, and I'm meaning Brandon Ross Croucher the third, okay? Yeah. I'm not a third. I just love to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but my thing is, when you pass away, how do you want to be remembered? And I don't mean that in a way that's like, oh, I bought my mom a house. Oh, I bought my family this. Oh, I took everybody and did this. I helped the homeless and built a shelter, whatever. No, how do you want to be remembered? Mm -hmm. I want to be remembered as I literally was able to give of myself in a way that when I entered a room or entered a screen, I literally was able to lift everybody up that was watching. For me, the day I pass away, I want it to be where my legacy is I left an imprint on people's hearts to build a better world. Mm. I don't know. That's just me, but it's hard to do because that positivity thing, nobody wants to be positive. Everybody, it's easier to be negative. But when you pass away, that's when, oh, you're such a good guy and all this stuff. And I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of you, Jess. I'm just using that (laughs) as an example. But like for real, it's we say these things afterwards. What are you doing today to separate yourself? What are you doing today that shows you're living your fucking life to the fullest? And yes, I'm using my F-bomb early because I want you to think about that today for yourself. Gavin, if you were to die today, Jessica, if you were to die today, how do you want the world to remember Jessica Dugas? I'm literally writing on your tombstone, the big D, and that's it. Like, (laughs) Uh, I I would like to be remembered differently by every person that I meet. Mm-hmm. I, I want some people to think he was the sweetest, most caring, giving guy that you would know. I want some people to think he was a dick. He he, <laughs> he would just pick on you without mercy. I want I some people that. to think I want some people to think, oh, you know what? Like he would walk into a room and you just respected him. And I want other people to think, you know what, you walked in a room and he just acted a fool. He was kind of a jackass. Like, I, I want to be remembered in as many different ways as possible, but majority of those to impact people. I, I want as many different ways as possible, but even mm-hmm. the negative ways to still impact people positively. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yes. I love yes. that. Um, and it's just I- the biggest. Uh, it, it's a really tricky question because of the fact of what we talked about of when we're talking about giving um, and not expecting anything back. So I, I, I 
teeter the line of saying, I would hope that everybody would remember me as being given, giving and, and loving and all of that and understanding and forgiving. Um, but in the end, I think it's me that has to be good about where I'm at on a, on a moment to moment ba basis. But I do want to leave you with a quote that is actually one of my favorite quotes. Um, it's from Irma Bombeck and it's, and so you can take this however, it doesn't need to be a religious thing um, if you're not. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and I could say I used mm -hmm. everything you gave me. Mm. Mm. I, I, think, I think that's a great way of saying it. Uh, guys, I'm going to share the, share Jessica's link again uh, because the truth is this is a really great idea of remembering and Jessica, I'm not stealing your brother's thing in any way here, no. but I, I think, yeah, I, I think, and my Facebook just kicked in oh, all of a sudden <laughs> me trying to click it to share to you. Guess what happened? All of a sudden I hear my voice in the background and I'm like, how do you guys stand this? Like, wow. <laughs> But no, now you know. <laughs> now, now you know why we do it out. <laughs> uh, but for real, like we have done, you're giving in such a great way, and you're saying this as a remembrance and a love and a passion. Uh, Jessica, I, I, I'm going to share it again before we get off the show. I just don't want to click it because my guest is here, and then all of a sudden <laughs> I go to the wrong thing again. But Thank you. Thank you, Jessica Dugas, for coming on, having the heavy conversation during a very easily emotional week. And know that we are very grateful for you being willing to be such a great example. So thank, thank you, you, Jessica. Thank you for having me back. And I'm hoping you guys make sure you join the event and participate with us. And I'm hoping when I'm back on next Tuesday, I have lots of amazing things to share about what people did and how much fun they had in, in memory of him. I love it. Jessica, that was absolutely amazing. You are one and amazing. Uh, go give Phil a kiss. Tell him it's for me, just like I'll always. Do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jess. We have a very, very special guest today, uh, Mr. Jay Bahar. I'm going to mess this up. Bahara. I did it right last time, and now I'm messing it up. Jay Bahar. Bahar. Uh, he's coming to talk to us. Please just correct me when you come on. That way you can make fun of me. Uh, the uh, He evacuate the office to help people who nagged by the thoughts of, I feel like I'm wasting the best years of my life. Do I really have to wait until I retire to do the things I want to do? Is life really this boring? And life is too short. Uh, life is too short to live for retirement and just tolerate 40 plus of your precious years. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce to you, Mr. J. Hello. Good. How are you doing? All right. I'm doing well. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, as far as my last name, don't worry about it. It's a toughie. Um, I think everyone I've ever met in my entire life, besides my mom, has probably <laughs> pronounced it in their own unique way. Uh, no worries. It's Bahador. But uh, whatever way you want to pronounce it, it's cool with me. Bahador. Yeah. That's it. Did I, did I get it? Uh, All right. I just, I want to be respectful on that. Like I read it right the first time and I sounded it out before we went on air and now you're backstage and the like intimidation of it came on and I just like freaked <laughs> out. So, but yeah. we are honored to have you. So, all right, first thing first, I love the way you phrased your stuff in your bio about how you can easily like, do you feel like you're wasting the best years of your life? Uh, is you, you don't look old enough to think you're wasting the best years of your life. Uh, you look like you're like still like in your best years. How did you know this was time to break free, get out of the pharmacy? As I said before you came on, you had access to free drugs and you didn't take it. You, and you knew it was time to go. But like, and, and thank you for laughing. <laughs> Sometimes my jokes don't get, get there. But uh, how did you know having a predominant career following this path and really wanting more for Jay, how did you know this was the thing to do? And then what was that first step you did for that? Yeah, for you? Um, sure. What you, what the stuff you read is right off my site. And um, I'm glad you liked the way I phrased it. I wrote that because that describes myself. And uh, I realized there's a lot of other people out there. It wasn't yeah. just me. Um, and how, how did I know it was time? Well, I'm a pharmacist by trade uh, for people tuning in and 
it's a lengthy process. You have to get a graduate degree and, and get into the school and do all that sort of stuff. So I had a lot of time to stew on that career, um, work in it, deal with it, and just realize it wasn't for me. Um, what The way I ended up in that is a lot of it was, was just, I had no idea what I wanted to do at the end of high school. Um, so, so my family suggested that because really not for any wonderful reason, they want the best for me. And in the 80s and 90s, it was a very prestigious career. It was financially lucrative more so than it is now. Um, yeah. So I just, I just went along with that. But I never took the time to think about what I actually wanted. And when, as I got older into my late teens and early 20s, that's when, I mean, I think we all go through that, right? Um, mm -hmm. We start questioning ourselves and thinking about what we want and, and saying, like, you know, has everything I has everything I've done been a lie? Have I been doing the wrong things and on the wrong path? So that was just my personal awakening, really, um, starting to think about what do I want instead of what do I feel like I have to do? I agree. I love that. So when you took that first step, what? I, 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 look, stepping out into your own realm, being your own person, that first step is always an insanely difficult one. It always is going to be the one that's like, is there going to be something there as you're stepping forwards? As you took that step and you went out there, what was a challenge that made you want to almost turn back and you're like, no, I'm, I, there's too many other things I got to do? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's two main factors here. Is when I first decided I was going to make a career change to something totally different, which in my case was business, I actually screwed up the first time, um, landed a job that was not a good fit at all. I uh, didn't believe in what the company was doing. I was just so desperate to get out of where I was, um, which I've, I've later learned is not a productive way to go about things. Um, and that's why I try to help people get it right that first time. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, good morning, Sherry. Somebody uh, sent, sent a message here. They're, 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 I was trying to click all the good mornings to you and I, 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 without interrupting you. I'm sorry. <laughs> No worries. No worries. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Could you repeat the second part of your question? I got <laughs> caught up. No, somewhere. you're good. See, I distracted you. Uh, with with that first step and going out, there's always something that's going to be a roadblock. There's always something that's going to be like, no, 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 you're making the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. What did you do to keep yourself going in the right direction, even though behind you looks so much, so much more tempting? Yeah, behind me was tempting in the sense of just safety and comfort and, and familiarity. Uh, I think it's easy to stay comfortable and be mediocre and to, to not achieve your full potential just because yeah. it's comfortable that way. Um, what kept me going was my desire and, and, and my commitment to um, finally figuring out what I wanted and, and just saying to myself, you know, now that I know what I want, I can't use that as an excuse anymore that, no, oh, I have no idea what I want. So I just have to push forward. Otherwise, I'm never going to forgive myself if I uh, stay on a path that's not consistent with, with what I want. And yeah, like I was saying before, I, I first thing I did, I messed up. I landed the wrong job, and there was also a lot of family pressure behind it as well. Like, and it's totally understandable. It, it's like, what are you doing? You got this degree yeah. in pharmacy. You're not even really making use of it. Um, so that was that was going to be my question. Did you have any support from friends or family during all this? Because it's like you're kind of jumping into the deep end without any floaty zone. A little bit, a little bit, and no regrets. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of support from friends, from my friend, from my friend group. They were very much good. Uh, good. telling me, you know, don't, why waste your life? Yeah, the money might yeah. be good in pharmacy, so on and so forth. Um, but why waste your life? You, could, you can't do something for 40 years that you hate. Um, yeah. So I did have a lot of support. Now, do you think that they were telling you that because they believed in what you were doing like they, they were like they agreed with it they would do it themselves or you think they were saying it because they wanted to support you but they were also too afraid to actually do that themselves if it came down to it they were, they were like living vicariously through you like oh let's see if he's successful or not that's a really good question um yeah, yeah i don't think they what i do is pretty niche uh, i'm in a, a niche within business within a certain sector of healthcare. So I don't think they yeah. understood what I was going for and what I decided I wanted to do. Um, I think they just wanted me to be happy, really. I, I think Good. it was more like, we have no idea what this job you're talking about is or what industry this is, but um, yeah. it seems like it makes you happy and we just want you to go for it. That's what it seems yeah. like. And how long ago did you take that leap? Like to go into being your best friend, following your dreams? Yeah, it's been almost three years since I, I made major changes to my 
career and my lifestyle. Um, and that's exciting because it's sustainable. I feel like I've, I'm have i proving it to myself that it's sustainable, that it wasn't just a phase that I'm going to quit and go back. Um, yeah, I, I'm loving where I am right now career-wise. That's great. Could you go back if you wanted to or had to, though? Could I go back? Maybe. Maybe I could hustle my way back into it. Realistically, I don't yeah. think so um, because it, my, my philosophy is that you can – you can work your way into a lot of different careers, even if you don't have the right experience or, or what they want on paper. But there's some exceptions. Pharmacy is one of them. I think you know, being a lawyer is another. Things like that where it's very strict and, and regimented and you need licenses and stuff. I think I've yeah, been what they call out of practice and <laughs> kind of burn that bridge. I'm cool with that. I, I So... I'm clicking on this. Everybody, uh, I, why is mine echoing? I'm moving my mic back because I hear my echo. Uh, so I clicked on your website and all that, and you have done some pretty cool things. You are about not sitting at the office all day. You're about being out and doing things. You're about really expanding who you are as a person. What would you be advice for people who may be on that fence to take that first step? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. The first step, I think, is to um, get out of paralysis. It's really overwhelming to figure out what you want, to know what you should do. And, and then uh, I'll tell you, when I was um, looking into to making a career change, just super overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. it's like There's so many things to think about. What do I want? How do I get in touch with them? What if they don't like my resume? Blah, 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 experience. Um, so taking it a piece at a time, like, okay, let's calm down. What do I want? What do I want? And then you can start thinking about how realistic it is and the first step there. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm sorry. I'm playing with my echo, too. I think it's me. You're good. You're it's gotten to the point now where, in my mind anyway, I don't think I, I truly believe that there isn't anything that is out of reach anymore for people. Like, you know, like when you're a kid and they tell you, oh, you can be whatever you want and you believe that and then you grow up and then you don't believe that anymore. I, I think I've kind of gone back to now I believe that just because I've seen so many people who are at the bottom and then go even lower than the bottom and then shoot their way up to the top somehow. I've seen people, they, they've either gotten lucky or they've climbed and crawled and fought to the top and they worked their ass off or something in between but uh, it's gotten to a point now in my head where i've seen humanity time after time do the quote-unquote impossible and label something else impossible just to smash that and i've seen so many people like climb up to where they want to go to or get across that barrier where i really don't believe that there is such thing as an impossible task or a person to accomplish in their life. I really don't believe that there's an impossible journey for somebody to take. If you really want it, you'll get there eventually. You just have to stay focused and just focus and you have to stay focused and continue on that path consistently. Yeah, that, that's a really awesome point. Um, glad you brought that up because yeah. I agree when we we're kids, that, that's a Real, that's a truth right there. When we're kids, we we believe that, that you can do anything. Uh, and then as we grow up, it, it goes away. And I don't know exactly what it is. It's probably messaging from different sources from um, parents who, who, it's not that they don't want us to succeed and be happy. They want us to be safe. They want us to be yes. uh, financially stable. comfortable. Stable, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. you talk to your high school counselor and then they have their own ideas <laughs> of how things should be and, and so on and so forth. Um, I think it's really cool as an adult to rediscover that possibility that you're right. All, pretty much nothing's impossible. You just need to find some stories and they really can help. Um, that said, motivation is fleeting. And, and going back to your point, I'm oh, um, staying focused. Yeah. I think the key to getting wherever you want to be, whatever that looks like, it involves discipline more so than motivation, really um, yeah, setting a yeah. regimen, setting your time every day to work towards that. Even when you don't feel like it just, it's like brushing yeah. your teeth. Like, honestly, this might be gross, but I don't feel like brushing my teeth some nights, but I do it. Uh, yeah, I do it. No, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you know, you just get lazy some nights. You just want to go to bed. I feel like that, 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 the little sidetrack, I feel like that's a taboo thing that nobody talks about, but everybody agrees on. The, okay. every, like, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I try to be really good about brushing my teeth and flossing and all that fun stuff. But there are some nights where I come home and I just pass out. Yeah, I just for sure. Bed. 
I'm glad to know that, that it's not just me and everyone everyone feels that way. Um, it's just like a yeah. tedious <laughs> thing at the end of the night, yeah. but it feels good after you you feel clean, and then yes. not to mention the long term impact of not you know having big dental bills and issues. Um, same thing I think applies to your career or, or any goal you want to achieve. It's just mm -hmm. in the long term. Yeah. Right. So. We have a question really quick, and I, I, I honestly debated on bringing this in, but I think where he's going has a good point. Uh, it's, do you have Indian or Middle Eastern parents? Were they devastated by your change? Because you went from being a pharmacist that made good money and all that to this. I read that like four times before I brought it in thinking, hmm, but that's a pretty good question because were your parents, how did they, I know my parents when I... I switched the mic and everything. Uh, I know my parents, they, uh, when I told them I was leaving <laughs> the restaurant and the medical industry to go make marijuana products and CBD products on my own, they literally like their, their eyes looked big, like huge. Cause I'm a former youth pastor too. Okay. So well, for them, it was a huge change and it's been three years myself of breaking through these barriers with them and being able to see what I was looking to do and finally getting to that point, my parents are like, oh, wow, this is different. And they're open to the conversation a lot more now. Uh, with your parents, you made a big change. Take, uh, like making good money to then all of a sudden getting out of the office, not doing what the everyday stuff is. What would you recommend? How do you, how were your parents on that? How did they act towards that? Okay. Yeah. For, first of all, that's a really cool background. Um, you've done a lot of different neat stuff. Uh, to answer that person's question, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. I love people with interesting backgrounds and, and trying different stuff. Um, to answer that, that, that person's question. Yeah. My parents are Indian. I was born here in the States in, uh, in New Jersey. Um, it's interesting. Uh, my parents are from a country called Guyana where Indians immigrated to South America a long, long time ago. So we only speak English at home um, with like a Caribbean accent. Well, they have a Caribbean accent. Um, yeah. But yeah, culturally still in touch with that, that Indian stuff where, you know, doctor, engineer, uh, pharmacist, those sort of careers. And they were super, I'll tell you, they were super proud when I graduated. And it just made it that much harder to make a change, uh, especially my grandma. Um, my grandma was like super yeah. proud. She's a nurse really into the medical field. Um, so when I made that change, I was like, oh, man, like, <laughs> this is, how am I going to break this to them? Um, yeah. It's been a long time coming. They don't they didn't fully understand what I was doing or what I envisioned. Uh, but now that I'm at a place where I've demonstrated it's sustainable, it is stable and, and financially um, rewarding as well. I would say it took about three years ish for them to come around and accept this is yeah. what I'm going to do and I'm not going back. I feel like in in a way it's almost like breaking up with a girl that they really like. Like, like you've been you've been together for a while. She's met the family, you know, they 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 like her, they get along with her, they think that she's a good girl, and then you're like, you know what, it's just not working, and then they're devastated. And but you're sitting there like I'm the one with the broken relation. I'm the I'm the one really going through the changes in my life here. Yeah, yeah that's an interesting analogy. Um you're right. It's kind of like I don't know. My, my college education, they were really into the idea of me becoming a pharmacist. So that was like their baby as well. Um, yeah. It's kind of like our project as well, because they were pushing me through and, and keeping me motivated during school when it got tough, uh, which I always appreciate. But yeah, that was it's, it's time. My, my advice there is it's just time. Just demonstrate. Just show, not tell. Um, let yeah. your results be themselves. Oh my God. I say that all the time. I love that. I'm on your website, like reading things and I'm like, him and I are going to be best friends. Um, I, I, uh, so Gavin, I'm going to yes. show you something and I want you to tell me this doesn't sound like me. Ready? I'm going to bring this onto the screen, everybody and get ready. So Jay, this is something that I love that you wrote on your website. You wrote to just tolerate five out of seven days in your week. And like, like, it's not just oh yeah brandon you and i were talking about that the other day with the ninja turtles i have a full sleeve ninja turtle tattoo that reminds me to focus on if i get four good days a week that's one more in the positive than the negative and that's five more days in a month and a whole six more weeks in a year of being positive than negative just by getting four days in a week and for me that was like a game changer for my mental health it was like, holy 
F. I need to, and you you get one F bomb, and all the other swear words are free. So have fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, some people don't know, but like, they can drop one. And we we're all about being free on your spirit of talking and all that. I I love that you wrote that though, because it's not about just being content. It's about knowing that maybe you didn't have a good day but you kept yourself going in the right direction. That's a positive that a lot of people don't think. They find all their negatives, all their things that they're not, that aren't right. And you had a good job and all that. And you're still like, yeah, I wanted something else. I want it. Gavin got tired of me. See, he's already running away, you know? <laughs> but like, for real, you got to a point where you're like, nope, it's time for me to break down, break and do something else. I need to make me happy. Um, uh, it's been three years for you as you're doing these things. And as you're going through life, being a, a counselor, a, a change, a, a, a life changer, a career coach, you run into a lot of people who I'm sure are very negative and they have this stuck in their head. Uh, inspiration, your website says gets, you know, it has gotten you nowhere. What do you use to help not let that negative influence impact you? And then how do you keep yourself being Jay for them? That is really, really true. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, of negativity in the career space. And, and just is it entirely individual people's fault? I don't know. There's a lot of societal things at work here, too. Um, it, it, here in the States, we have a pretty broken work culture. We don't have guaranteed vacation time or things like that. Um, so I see where that comes from. However, uh, you have to decide you want to change. It's like I, I, I have a couple of friends that quit smoking cigarettes and they waited. They waited till it was their time to quit mm -hmm. smoking. Um, I feel like it's the same deal here. You have to decide it's time. And then some of that negative self-talk will go away once you, you find something worth pursuing. Um, and as far as how I keep myself going, it's because at the end of the day, even if I have a, a rough day at my job, I have what I consider to be a dream career. Um, but even, you know, I have rough days sometimes. I keep myself going because what I'm working towards is worth it to me. And that's improving the state of health um, around the country. Maybe one day globe, that'd be cool. Uh, so if you have something worth working for, then it's easier to stay motivated even when you have a, ba a bad day. And that's something that I think more companies could take note of to find something to stand for beyond just um beyond just shareholder value and, and just maximize mm. profits i love that and then people so, will get more interested. you're getting nicknames already uh hey jay <laughs> do you think that the anal analysis on paralysis slows people down when it comes to their dreams and if so how can we get out of that why are you stop messaging me people uh how can we i'm gonna close the app that's in the background that has your website up because it's also facebook page that's why all those messages are coming in uh if so how can we get out of that in your opinion so how do you get people out of the paralysis stage uh that slows them down and keeps them locked into where they're not good enough and everything yeah that person is absolutely right um analysis paralysis kills progress and i think the way to get out of it is action just straight action just do something today um try stuff out and fail quickly honestly and by fail in this context what i mean is uh if you're trying to find a new career path or something like that start doing the research now don't don't think too much about um you know overthinking the details and am i qualified and so on and so forth just if something interests you look it up go on forums Go on LinkedIn, um, talk to people if you can, and, and just learn as much as you can about it. And if it's not for you, good. You'll figure it out quickly. Um, an example of doing that is I was interested in consulting, actually, when I first uh, wanted a career change. Didn't know how I was going to do it. Didn't know if I had the experience for it. But I just looked into it and decided I didn't want to do it um, because one of my ideals is having flexibility and, and, and free time to enjoy my life outside of work. And mm -hmm. my research consultants don't seem to have that. It's very much beyond a nine to five. Um, so just do that stuff quickly. Just get started researching. Just even if you click the connect button on LinkedIn with people in industries that are mildly interesting to you, do something and then the path becomes clearer once you start taking action. Yeah. There's just something about it that's magical as opposed to sitting and thinking, just doing something, even if it's typing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, Gavin. You're up for yes. a question, buddy. I've asked a few. It's your turn. And I'm going to go look at his website and find my next one. Yeah, I know you're good. Yeah, I, I did have to use the restroom for a quick second. And then I'm just trying to 
find back where we were in the conversation. <laughs> I, we're, we're talking about being in, inspiration, uh, getting you nowhere, and then people breaking out of where their paralysis is and all that. Um, yeah. uh, one of So when we were talking about earlier about uh, being consistent and everything like that, uh, and I'm going to tie back to the conversation in a second. So we're talking about being consistent and everything and being focused. I think people think when they hear that, that they have to just constantly – non-stop be moving on like this train to success when in reality it's more like you just have to put aside time for it each and every day you have to make sure that you don't stop working on it but it doesn't have to be 100 percent continuous uh so and i'm sure that that's what you did where like you took breaks to go do other things and hang out with friends go out to eat go on dates whatever it may be but what did you do how did you learn how to time manage and in order to stay sane, but still meet your goal of what you wanted to accomplish with this new career path. Yeah, you're absolutely right. When we talk about the hustle and, and discipline and striving for yeah. what you want, it doesn't have to be like it's portrayed on those LinkedIn influencer videos or whatever, where it's just 24 hours a day grind. Um, yeah. That's not healthy. So just set aside time, some time, uh, even if it starts with 10 minutes, and I'll tell you, I started with a half hour when I really, really wanted to get out of pharmacy and do something else. I started with a half hour every day to just work on that, figure stuff out um, and work towards that. And oftentimes when I would sit for that half hour, it would become more than that. And it got to a yeah. point where I was becoming obsessed with perfecting my resume and the best cover letters and, and getting myself out there and landing interviews. Um, well worth it. I went through a, a burst period where I was like, hours a day just working on that and then it landed me interviews at companies that were interesting so start small and just make sure you're consistent that's the main key i feel like that's more important yeah. than the actual length of time working hours and hours staying up overnight typing away in the computer pick a time and if you have nothing else going on no plans you're probably going to want to keep going that's just the way the human mind is we don't want to leave stuff unfinished right yeah you know, there, there's actually a study shown where um it was for college students studying and the way that they would do it is they would have them study for 30 minutes, take a 10 minute break, do whatever they want, get a snack, watch some uh, TV or whatever, and then do a 30 minute study again and just do these little intervals. And what they were seeing is that the way they were paying attention, they would like start, they had a graph and they would start up here on how much attention they were paying and how much information they were like, proficiently taking in and over that 30 minutes and then right at the end it would start to drop and they would they'd stop studying then and then they take that break and then they go back and what would happen is when they would take that break and then go back they were just as efficient as studying as they were when they originally started that 40 minutes ago with that thir first 30 minute interval but that little break was just enough to allow them to reset rather than trying to study for six hours straight and only really getting a solid maybe hour and a half out of that, that would be proficient. And that, that kind of something that you can apply to anything about just being consistent. You need to take those little breaks in order to be able to refresh yourself. It's like, it's like sleeping, you know, I'm not really, nobody really knows why everything like philosophically why everything that has above average intelligence has to sleep but we do we're like when, when you sleep you and this is an actual like this is actual fact um you save about as much energy as you would just laying down doing nothing the amount of energy that you save is about a banana's worth wow. but we still need it to be able to mentally recuperate and even like physically just rebuild everything so taking these breaks is very very important um I, i'm curious on what exactly you've been doing to keep yourself healthy during the during all these grinds uh what, what have you been doing diet and exercise wise uh any sort of meditation to help you stay focused but collective as well yeah good question uh first of all i wish i knew about the the college study when i was in college i probably would have had better grades because i was a i was yeah. a student totally undisciplined and just i was on like a permanent 10 minute break 
uh, always. Yeah, I, I don't go to college, but I, I know every studying technique there is for college for some reason. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, in terms of in terms of health, really important. It, it complements each other. You know, keeping your body healthy yeah. is going to help you achieve what you want. Meditation, I do have a practice. It's not much. It's about 10 minutes a day, and I don't even do it every single day. Um, yeah. I do it most weekdays and then weekends. I, I just don't make time for it. Uh, that's on yeah, me. Yeah. I could easily carve out time for it. I just don't. Um, diet and exercise. Yeah, I one great thing about having a remote job, remote work setting is I go for runs um, some days. And I also get to go to the gym in the, in the middle of the day when it's not five o'clock or. Oh, like, that's awesome. nice. Yeah. When you know, when you when you go to the gym after you know five o'clock, every machine you want is taken. Uh, yeah. Super crowded. And especially you're standing with, there uh, awkwardly, like you, you want to yeah. go on your phone because it's instinct, but then you also don't want to go on your phone because you're in the middle of the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second you get on your phone, somebody will come and ask you, like, are you done? Like, how many sets do you have left? <laughs> yeah. Makes, not want to get. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, that's one perk for sure. of Remote work. I feel like it's improved my physical health a lot. Just being able to not be chained to the desk from eight to five and then have a little window for exercise. Um, and like you said, taking breaks. Yeah, it really helps me work as well. Go for a quick run, come back, and feel good to get started again. That's good. So That's good. you say work should fit your life, not the other way around. Uh, I'm sure through building your company and building what you're doing and all that, you had lots of stumbling blocks where it seemed like work was overtaking it. Uh, how do you notice those boundaries and then set them so you don't let work overtake you? That is a really good question, especially with so many people working from home. Um, my big thing is just blocking stuff off in the calendar. When I was first starting my my uh, my site, evacuate the office, I was really slow to get started with putting content on there because I wasn't. I was telling myself, you know, after work or before work today, I'm going to write something, but then I wasn't because I was getting kind of anxious to get started with work and oh, I want to get this done first. Um, and, and just ended up making a lot of excuses really, and, and then a friend hits me up in the afternoon and then I don't write. Um, what I started doing is blocking off anything that I'm serious about doing. And if I know that that I need to get this, I want to get this done, I want to give myself no excuses by having it on the calendar. And then if I don't do it, I can feel bad and beat myself up because I, I look at it and uh, I didn't do it. But that's how I've been maintaining that balance, an hour to write, an hour to do whatever I have to do for the site. Um, as far as fitting into your life, yeah, we, we don't learn to think about things that way. And I think that is the root of a lot of unhappiness, especially, I can't speak to every country, but I, here in the States for sure. Um, Cause they kind of tell us what we want. I feel like yeah. Uh, yeah. you want this job, you want to do this, that, and the other. Well, do I, I don't know. I was never given the chance to think about it. So that's, that's my philosophy on, on that. And that's what I mean by that. I think it's so, interesting. Cause I definitely agree that we're told what we want, but we're told what we want as a consumer. And what I mean by that is we're told that we want a, uh, a middle-class sort of like lifestyle, you know, the picket fence with the family mm -hmm. nine to five or the blue collar job and stuff like that. But then we're told that we also want the very high brand, very expensive cars and, to and like toys and makeup and houses and things like that as well. So we're kind of told that we want this uh, old style, like very homey kind of humble life with all the accessories of something that takes a lot more effort to get yeah absolutely um especially you know parents who were if you have parents who were born in, in the boomer generation and stuff like that lifestyle yeah. and culture was just so different uh i don't my parents compared to me they have so much more stuff um <laughs> stuff that that to me has no function i don't really understand it as a, as a, a young <laughs> you, you missed the beginning of the show where I made fun of my mom calling her a hoarder because I moved back in my parents following my dream. I've been all over the country lately and I'm making the joke about how I had to clean this room up because she's a, such a hoarder. And I, then you're like, my parents have stuff they don't, I don't even know what they need. And I'm sitting here yeah. laughing because I'm like, yup, I know what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and my grandparents are even worse. They have a, a garage full of just like, I don't know. I love them, by the way, but but they have like jars and old stuff. I don't understand. I don't know what this is for. Um, and you're totally right. They we are taught how to be consumers and to make sure we spend all of our money on stuff 
regardless whether or not that's what we want. Um, a, a quick story, you know, I was actually interested in buying a house, putting down for a house. Um, yeah. My family was all for it. They're like, oh, good. You have enough cash to put down? Yeah, do it. Good investment. And then I changed my mind and I, I got this apartment instead. Um, and they were like, oh, what are you doing? Because I realized I don't know where I want to settle down like forever or for like 20 years. So yeah. I just got this apartment for the year. Um, well, what about renting it out? Like you could buy a house and then if you decide not to sell there forever, you could rent it out to people and that becomes a source of income. You could. Uh, that's a good idea. It's something I yeah. thought about. My, my uncle is a, he's a real estate genius in this area. Um, yeah. And here in, in New Jersey, where I am, the particular houses I could afford with my level of, of savings, I'm, I'm not that old yet. Um, they're in an area that's not growing. The, the market's not growing. It's not really people looking to rent. Um, yeah. So that's why yeah. I stayed away from that. But yeah, it's totally a plan as well. If you have the cash for it, you can buy in a nice prime area. Yeah, why not? Uh, it just shows how different the thinking is. With, with, you know, all my friends are renting. No, nobody's interested in the house right now. We're, we're all renting. So very interesting. Now, is that you not wanting to buy a house because of wanting to be open to the future and what might happen, going somewhere and being able to do something? Uh, or is it more of like you're just trying to build your savings as you're following your dream? Like what is your main hot thought for Jay behind that? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm still figuring it out. Um, I'm totally just You're allowed to. <laughs> I'm just really, I'm really building my savings while I think about what I want in a home, or if I want a home, or where I want to live. Um, and that that's another thing is is I feel like millennials are open to moving, especially in my area. A lot of millennials are moving out because it's very high cost yeah. here in New Jersey. Uh, and me and my girlfriend actually, we live here, and we were talking about. Um, not seriously, but we were thinking about, hey, what if we moved to, to Florida or, or North Carolina or something? It just got like a, a nice property with a lawn that we could never afford out here. Um, just talking, but but we're very open to that possibility. Whereas in the old days, it was normal, I think, to stay really close to your family uh, within a yes. couple of miles or hours drive or whatever. And that's kind of going by the wayside for younger people. Let me ask yeah, you no, I completely you. agree with that. Like. I, I love my family very much, and I, I would do anything for most of them. But I also want I also know that you know life is temporary, and there's so many things that I want to see and do, and I, I can't even fathom what the possibilities are unless I actually go out there and find them. Right, you want to stay open. At least our generation yeah. wants to stay open and not completely anchor ourselves forever. Yeah. yeah. You said Florida and North Carolina. Is that because you want the warmth or is there other reasons? Yeah, I, I'm Indian. I hate the cold. My body's not made for it. So uh, I, I thrive in the heat. Um, the other re re rationale is really cost. Uh, I was, like I said, me and my girlfriend the other day, we were, um, or the other week, we were looking up houses on Zillow just for fun in like other areas. And we were getting real pissed off with how much stuff costs around here it costs it, renting is is not too crazy actually not compared to new york city which is not that far away from me um but buying here is ridiculous with property taxes and you know it goes back to thinking about what you want out of life i don't know if i feel like i'm throwing they say rent is throwing money away i feel like property taxes are, are throwing money away uh they can go between 11 and, and twenty thousand dollars for property tax here and i just think about all the things all the experiences you could have and um vacations you could take, you could buy you catering for your friend's birthday, whatever you want with that money. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, like, it's, it's, I think it's important to reevaluate these old narratives and, and not just blindly take them for granted. Mm. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, with, with that, it's uh, – how do I phrase this? I think having those old narratives are, are – still ingrained in so many people because the house when you don't add all of that up you have the taxes you have that you have to buy the washing machine the dryer the the lawnmower the weed whacker you have to fix things in the house you have the roof you have all that other stuff when you add in everything else you're you're if you wrote it down all the way through compared to renting and then having to fix those things there's a lot of money that could be saved and I personally, I understand the benefits of a house, but like you're saying, there's so many things to do and see in this world that 
even renting a house out consists of you being able to fix it and take care of it and maintain the house where an apartment let somebody else take care of it and you disappear you know like, go move, you can move um what is your dream at the end of your journey what is what is what is jay's end goal for his life where, how do you want to leave your impact that is a deep question um yeah my I, goals here sorry no, I was going to say, I can make it easier. What's Gavin's way you want to see Gavin go in life? Just make it up for him, you know, male stripper, whatever you want. <laughs> what, I've never done that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Have you? I did. I have, yeah. 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 Wow. That, that, how, did you, how did you go about landing that gig? Do you just walk in and, and they say, like, you've got it, then you can be a male stripper? I mean, in all honesty, um, some of the clubs here, yeah, I probably could do that. Uh, but I, I did private shows. So it started out as a joke. Um, what it happened was my, a buddy of mine, his girlfriend had never had a, um, like actual birthday party and she had just turned 18. And so he wanted to get her a male stripper. Um, so he hired me, but the joke was that I had to wear as much clothing as humanly possible. So it was like two and a half minutes to me unzipping and unbuttoning shirts to a pony oh, on January oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and taking off jeans. And then he ended up posting a video of it on uh, on Snapchat. And I ended up getting, because I was also in the show choir at the time, and we did uh, Bye 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 by uh, sync. And I ripped my shirt open in the beginning of the, of the song because we were on stage and I thought it'd be funny. Well, I ended up getting a couple actual birthday parties and some uh, girls I went to high school with. They had like uh, this one girl's cousin was getting married. He needed someone for a bachelorette party. And like uh, people like moms and stuff, soccer moms, like birthdays, stuff like that. So I had probably, I want to say a dozen or so private shows that I ended up doing just by word of mouth. That's really cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was crazy. That is really crazy. It's an interesting experience. Uh, you both have really fascinating backgrounds and, and dabbled in some awesome th things, um, much more so than me. My, my, my stuff has very been like office projects, academic stuff like that. Uh, I think that's awesome. That's okay. You make more money than both of us combined, so it balances out. <laughs> Stripping, uh, I don't know. I hear th things about strippers. Maybe, maybe there's something there with money. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it, it, it depends the show that you get and where... Um... The talent that you got, you know, it could be hit or miss. Like some of the shows that I did, um, Jay's good. I, made, I walked Jay's out with like a couple hundred dollars. Uh, the one, the one bachelorette party that I did, I actually, I want to say, I made about two grand. Wow, that's yeah. nice, right? Like, like yeah. I don't think I could make two grand stripping. They, they'd be like, "Can you pay us?" Uh, <laughs> but Jay, you're good, buddy. You're good. I asked you the question of what your future holds, and now we're talking about Gavin stripping. All I'm gonna do is start uh, playing genuine cool. pony in the background, see what happens. I completely uh, uh, copyright is what's gonna happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so Jay, yeah. how do you see yourself going in the future? I know that that's kind of a vague question, but for you, there is you've 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 taken that leap and you've taken that first step. You're doing it. You're seeing it. Your family's starting to see the benefits of it. What do you see for the future for Jay? How do you see yourself influencing not just you, but Gavin, me, everybody in the world, and leaving your impact? Yeah, for sure. I'll actually answer the question this time instead of derailing it. <laughs> uh, I, I, my big thing is to have the projects I work on make some kind of impact and positively change something. So my site, my idea for that is to, you know, there's countless people that are really happy because of their work situation and it's really affecting their lives, um, providing them with a sense of hopelessness almost and purposelessness. That's what I've been seeing a lot from people I work with. Uh, I want to help mitigate that as much as I can. It's a systemic issue that's going to take work from uh, companies, corporations, government, all that stuff. But I want to do what I can because I think even within our current weird system, you have a lot, you have more control than you realize, and you have more power than you realize. You just need to realize that and to, to, to take certain steps and get strategic about it. Um, other impact in my career, I love my career because it, it, it leaves a positive impact on health. Uh, we have a, a very, very complex and 
broken healthcare system here in the US. Um, so I love the work I do with, with companies in terms of improving that, creating more access to healthcare, especially in communities that uh, are underserved within the country. And another big impact piece um, that's important to me is just having a lot of time spent with people I care about. Uh, I gotta say my career has enabled me to have a lot of time with people that uh, I care about. And one big regret I know people have as they get older is I wish I had more time with this person. You can, you can get very dark and deep with that if you want. Um, but that's one regret I'm happy to say I, I generally won't have to have if I keep up on this track. So those three things really impacting work culture and, and helping people be happier and not be so controlled by work, uh, impacting healthcare and then impacting the people immediately around me in my personal life. I, What's I, something I crazy love that. you want to do? I'm sorry? What, what is something crazy that you want to do? What's something like impulsive, like, uh, like skydiving or like, or like something like swimming with sharks? What's something crazy you want to do? That is a, an awesome question. Um, I actually have thought about this in one day. I want to just spend a month or two or something just driving across Canada. That's super random, uh, but I love Canada. And love this that. is something I'm planning for like down the road. Maybe I could take a, a gap from work, you know, um, finish yeah. up at a certain job and then say, you know what? I'm just going to not have anything lined up yet. Do that. And then we're is there stuff like to do in Canada? In my mind, I, I've never been to the mainland of Canada. I've only fished in the waters. So in my mind, Canada is just like a city and then nothing, just frozen nothing. And then like another city that speaks French and then frozen nothing and then another city. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, you're not completely wrong. I think most of Canada, believe it or not, is like uninhabited by humans because it's just cold Arcticness. Uh, yeah. Even though it's larger than the United States, only a very small percent, something like 80% of all Canadians live south of Detroit, I think. Uh, maybe, you know, something like that. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I just There is stuff to do. There's, there's cool cities I've never been to, uh, like um, Escape New Whistler, I want to go to in British Columbia, Winnipeg. Um, I've already been to Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto. Definitely want to go back. Uh, I just see some of the nature stuff as well. There's What's that park in um, Banff? Banff, I forgot what the name of the province is. Alberta, maybe. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, there's stuff like that. And I just thought it'd be cool to take my time, you know, spend time in some cities, spend time in the nature. Um, don't know when I'm going to do that, but that's a super crazy thing that, that I'd love to do one day. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, awesome. Think that. I think that a lot. I love uh, Canada. That's why I, if you ever been to Banff Lake Louise, have I been there? No, I've only been to uh, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver so far. Oh, see, uh, when you get the chance to drive across Canada, it's on the opposite end. It's by it's above Seattle and all that. Uh, Lake Louise. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in the world. And like for real, like you you can walk there. And hiking is like oh, the sun's on you, but there's snow, so you are like in like a light t shirt and stuff like that, and it feels great absolutely one of the most beautiful places like i recommend highly it's i love canada just because of lake louise um and many other reasons but uh with right now you're in new jersey you said correct i am i am and i gotta remember lake louise so i don't forget to, to see that oh lake I, I definitely heard that wrong i thought he said i gotta remember to get weed and i'm like wow that came out of nowhere like i'm like yeah i'm in new jersey i, I need yeah. some weed like i'm like i guess i my, my friends from jersey i get what he's saying i just uh, i understand uh jay so uh, what does your girlfriend do if you don't mind me asking yeah she works in the hr capacity at a, at a food company a food startup um they package meals and it's just Time for people that are really busy slash too lazy to cook. Um, they're supposed to be healthy. And I, I don't know how true that is or not. I think they are. I think they're like more healthy than other TV dinners you would buy it and like getting the You want to believe they are. I want to believe it. Um, I want to believe it. It's service uh, that, yeah, I know an acquaintance of mine who's a, a medical resident. He's super busy working ridiculous shifts in New York City. Um, he uses the service because he does not feel like cooking and I don't blame him uh, when he comes home from the hospital. So that's what she does. And um, yeah, I think it's a cool company and, and it's an interesting role that she does as well. So I know we're coming to, uh, 
I don't. Uh, Jay, please have Fiore's sandwich for me. Fiore in Jersey. Oh, He's from, okay, he lived in Jersey for a little bit. He said so. He lived in Westfield, New Jersey. Oh, he's, okay. Westfield. Yeah, he's one Westfield. of our regulars, and he is just. He has he's been all over the world, like he knows everything. It's amazing awesome. to have Tokyo Bento. Uh I'll bring that on my phone, actually. Uh Fiori's. Um, I'm not gonna forget that. And Lake Louise. And Lake Louise, Banff, Lake Louise. It's it, you could look up either of those, it's the same thing. Uh Banff is the name of the city, Lake Louise is the name of the lake. Okay. Uh with Fiori. this so you, is... you got a whole plan then you're gonna get a sandwich, you're gonna get your weed, you're gonna go to the lake. <laughs> It's legal now, actually. Uh, it, it's totally It legal. is? Yeah, they, we legalized oh. it in the last election. So now, wait, awesome. actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a very, this is me question. I, the, you do not have to answer. Um, with weed being legalized and the medical benefits that we've seen, you've come from the pharmacy. Gavin, mm -hmm. don't put your head down. You knew I was going to ask about weed stuff. So oh, what no, are your sorry. thoughts? A ADHD, never mind. Squirrel, uh, yeah. what are your thoughts with everything glow going on with this? Are you more pro marijuana? Are you more, you know, there's a lot of research to be done still. I, I'm pro, but there needs to be research. We need to see how this works. How are you being a pharmacist, seeing the medical industry? And, oh, I, and now I say this because New Jersey legalized, New York legalized. I'm, we're in Ohio. Medical is legal, but if a doctor prescribes you a medical card, they could lose their medical license. Oh, wow. So it's not really legal. It's not. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're right with me. Like, like on a scale of Richard Nixon to Snoop Dogg, how pro pop? <laughs> I am, uh, I'm a Snoop Dogg. I'm a Snoop Dogg. I am, um, yeah, my time in pharmacy has given me some interesting views on, on drugs. I'm actually pro letting people use what they want to um, in general and, and actually decriminalization of of everything which might sound crazy to some people um i say that based on, on two things there's it's a different conversation but research in portugal as well as some other communities um that shows the benefits of that for society as well as just the basic freedom to expand and explore your consciousness as you want i mean you're not going to see me using certain things like methamphetamine and heroin but uh, i don't yeah. see why uh, people should be should be locked up and things like that for possession and use of those drugs alone um so, I, so that's a little beyond marijuana but i think you can assume i'm very pro legalization of marijuana i no i actually pro marijuana uh ann arbor michigan uh oakland and denver colorado all legalize psilocybin and psilocybin is the natural chemical that is produced from mushrooms to help with the psychedelic effect. Uh, just recently, I sat in on a conference with about psilocybin with UC Berkeley and the studies they're doing with it. And it's absolutely amazing the anxiety, depression, microdosing is having. And people are opening up their eyes to something so different that they thought used to be so bad. And I talked to a friend just recently and they started using microdosing out in California. And she, they were like, Brandon, I've never felt better. It, it, it's done amazing things for me. And I just, I love that we're getting to live in a time where we're opening up our eyes to this. We're opening up ideas to new ways of doing things. And I think this is a, a great way for us to be able to keep growing and you being a, 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 a former uh, pharmacist i'm like I, I that's why i make the jo drug jokes is it fits it makes it fun to have these conversations with an easy way of talking um so we have five minutes left in the show sorry add uh <laughs> so the way we do this is we end each show with positive affirmations. We give people inspiration to push through their day. Uh, we, may, we, Gavin and I start with like, uh, we, we say something to give you that way to keep going. And then we pass it on to you. So you see how the day goes and we, you leave everybody with that inspiring what keeps Jay going for the day. So sure. Gavin Kerr is going to go first and he's going to blow our minds because he always does. Alrighty then. Uh, so I, I like to challenge the people watching today and the people who have been a part of the show today. First off, thank you for being here. Uh, but the challenge that I have for you is to go travel 
sometime this week, whether it's to another country, another state, or another city or town nearby. Just go somewhere that you've yet to go before and just kind of mingle, you know, go, maybe go to a restaurant or a bar somewhere, talk to somebody at a place that you've never been before. Put yourself out there just because you never know what opportunities will lie unless you go out and seek them. Very true. Very true. Well said, Gavin. Well said. Uh, so, guys, we had a great interview today with Jay, and he is all about being a career coach. He offers a free session on his website. Uh, I recommend everybody go check that out. I'm going to share the link in one more se- in one second. But, but I want to let you guys know that today is just t- a Tuesday. Time is fleeting. Time is not something that you can completely control. But the thing is, You control who you are. So make the time of your life the best that you can because no one else is going to do that for you. Only you can make each moment your best moment. Thanks for joining us. Jay. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, Really enjoyed this conversation. One thing uh, I'd love to leave people with is similar to to Gavin's challenge. Um, Start a conversation with somebody who does something that you respect. doesn't matter what it is. It's probably different to you. Just go find them. Find a way to get in touch with them. Um, I do have scripts for that if you'd like on, on my site to help you out. But whether or not you use them, just try. Just go and try, and, and you'll be surprised. Um, try to get in touch with somebody you respect. Mm, I love it. I love it. Uh, Jay, the, I shared your website one more time. Everybody go give it a follow. Uh, I've already signed up in the background when I my mic was being too annoying. And I signed up to be a part of your, um, where'd it go? Your career cheat sheet. Uh, great, great thing. I, I'm in my career, but I think you and I would have some fun conversations. So I signed up just so I could see what you're doing and be inspired by you because that's how we keep our fires going is lighting each other's. Um, I really am grateful for this conversation. I've already liked your page on Facebook. Uh, So guys go do us a favor, follow Jay, give him that love, give him that appreciation that our community brings. Uh, Jay, do you have any last words for us before I take us out today? Last words is I just want to thank you guys so much for for letting me have this conversation. Um, Thanks everyone writing messages and, and I, I was reading them getting used to reading stuff and having a conversation i'm not uh super often on podcasts but thank you all so much for leaving those comments thank you brandon and gavin for an engaging Absolutely. conversation and indulging me on, on strippers and weed and all these other things wow. <laughs> happy to do so man <laughs> you we, never we know what we're gonna we say love to have you back on uh, we can indulge in other various things that Brandon and I have been a part of in our lives as well. So, I like to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to this. Everybody, give him a follow. Have a great one. Go change the world, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.